Hi everyone, our OS video assignment is on deadlock avoidance and this is our team Aditya Rohan, IT03, Pinesec, IT22, Shubham, IT40, Santos, IT81 and Sharaf Saket, IT86. Uh, hi, my name is Sharaf Saket. Uh, my registration number is on the 986. Today, me and my team is going to explain you about deadlocks. Now, let me start, start with what is deadlocks. So, deadlocks is basically a condition in which several process waits uh, for infinite time to get executed. Suppose we have a, a process P1 and uh, we have a resource R1 and we have a process P2 and a resource R2. So, <coughs> Now, P1 requires R1 to get executed and it's allocated with R1. And P2 requires R2 to get executed and it requires R2 and it's allocated R2. Now, P1 also requires R2 to get to execute and P2 also requires R1 to get executed. But now, see, like uh, R1 is uh, allocated to P1, P2 can't execute because it requires both R1 and R2 to get executed. So, similarly with P1, uh, P1 uh, this, the same case happens. So, for this, uh, this kind of uh, situation in this case, uh, now I am going to explain you about resource allocation graph and cycle condition for dead loss. Now, the three graphs which you can see here uh, is basically a resource allocation graph. In this like process are uh, represented with a circle and resources with a uh, square and uh, this is the and this is the request dish so now let me explain you with the cycle and uh, the deadlock relationship so as you can see here like there is no cycle like P1 requests for R1 and it's allocated R1 and P2 requests for R2 and it's allocated R2 and there is no cycle and as you can see that there is no deadlock now let's come up. Let's come up with a situation in which there is a cycle and a deadlock. Now, P1 uh, is a process which requests for R1 and it get allocated. Similarly, P2 requests for R2 and it and it get allocated. Now, P2 also requires for R1, but R, uh, and uh, P1 also requires for R2. As you can see, there is a cycle, and also neither of them get executed. So this you can see like there is a cycle and there is a deadlock. Now, there is a cycle. You can see here like P1 request for R1 and P2 request for R2 and it's allocated. Similarly, P1 also requests for R2, so forming a cycle. But as you can see, like there's a multiple instance of R1. So R1 is allocated to P1 and R1 is allocated to P2. And now P2 has all the resources to get executed. So it will get executed first and then it will release all the resources. So P1 can execute. So there's a condition in which there's a Hello friends, myself I am Shek, IT22. I will be explaining the necessary condition for deadlock, which are mutual exclusion, golden weight, no, no preemption and circular weight. These are four conditions which should occur simultaneously to deadlock occur. So let us see what is mutual exclusion. In mutual exclusion, there should be at least one resource which is held in non-shareable mode. What is non-shareable mode? In non-shareable mode, that resource can only be used by one process at a time. So, that is mutual exclusion, in which at least one resource exists, which is in non shareable mode. Then what is held and weight? Hold and weight. A process must be holding at least one resources and waiting for another resources, which is held by some process which is stopped due to unavailability of resources. That is hold and weight. Then what is not no preemption? The process cannot be preempted and resources, sorry, resources cannot be preempted from the process before its completion. That is known as no preemption. So that it can't uh, take out the resources from the process which is running or which is stopped. So that is no preemption. Then what is circular? What is circular? Weight? Circular weight is a, in circular weight there exists a set of processes like P0, P1, up to Pn. P0 will be waiting for P1, uh, P0 will be waiting for the resources for P1. Not what is circular weight? In circular weight, there exists a set of processes like P0, P1, up to P1, in which P0 will be waiting for the resources held by P1, 
P1 will be waiting for the resources held by P2. In the same way, Pn minus 1 will be waiting for the processes resources held by Pn, and Pm will be waiting for the resources held by Pn. In such way, they will be, the cycle will occur there in circular way. Condition will be satisfied. So these are the four conditions which uh, which should occur simultaneously for a deadlock to occur. That's it. Hello, I am Aditya Rohan, IT03. So till now we've seen how deadlock occurs and the problems created by deadlock. So now we'll be focusing on how to avoid deadlock. And one of the major techniques used to avoid deadlock is called banker's algorithm. As the name suggests, banker's algorithm can be implemented in a bank. It's, it functions similar to the way a bank functions in the sense that it never allocates cash or resources more than it can be able to satisfy the needs of its customers. So to explain it, we'll use a simple example. Let us consider five processes, P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4. And let us consider just three basic resource types in the computer. Let us call them A, B and C. So we will consider A, B and C to have resource instances of 10, 5 and 7 respectively. So first when a process comes into the system, it has to specify its maximum need for that but for each particular instance. So in this case we see P0 has a maximum maximum requirement of 7 instances of A, 5 instances of B, 3 instances of C. In the same way, maximum resource requirements are specified for each of the 5 processes which we can see as has been written down here. And in the beginning some of the resources are allocated to the individual processes which has been shown on the left hand side. So as you can see here, P0 has been allocated one with one instance of resource B and no instance of resource A and resource C, while P1 has been allocated one instance of A and none of B and C. In this way, a table is created which notes the instances of individual resources which have been allocated to each of the processes. So using this, we will first create a, a available a available count for each of the individual resource instances. So we have 10 instances of A available. Of that, P0 uses none, P1 uses 2, P2 uses 3, P3 uses 2 and P4 uses none. So the, the instances of A that we are using are 2 plus 3 plus 2, that is 7. So the resources that we have left are 10 minus 7, that is 3. So in this way we calculated we calculate the available resource instances for each of the individual resource types. So we see that we have three instances of A, three instances of B, and two instances of C. So I am Sundar Kumar, eleven at eighty one. So now we will calculate the need for each individual process, which is given by the formula maximum need equal to maximum minus allocation. Hmm. P0 A equal to 7 minus 0 equal to 7 and P0 B equal to 5 minus 1 equal to 4 and P0 C equal to 3 minus 0 equal to 3. So similarly for just of the process. Shubham here, IT 14. So now we actually will start this, we will start implementing this algorithm. So we are picking our process at random. Suppose we are picking P0, okay. So we will take, we will check its need with, with the availability. Its need is 743, but availability is 332. And you can see that need is more than availability, so we can't pick this process. But what, what P0 needs is more than what is available. Logically speaking, it can't be accepted. So for P1, its need is 122, which is lesser than its availability right now, 332. So what happens is that, first of all, P1 it's actually takes 122 from here. So availability gets reduced to it's minus 1, 2, 2, it becomes 2, 1, 0. But after executing itself, it, re it releases its, its, its resources plus which it had earlier allocated, which, which it had been earlier allocated. So it again releases this one, that's plus 1, 2, 2, again becomes 3, 3, 2. So there's no point taking into calculation, but logically we can understand this. It first of all uses the resources which it needs, which it needs then it deallocates it. Then again, it deallocates these resources which it had earlier occupied. So it becomes 332 plus 200 becomes 532 here. So now, even gets executed. Right. 
Now we will move down to P2. So for P2, same process happens, same algorithm, 6, 0, 0. It's more than availability, we can't take that. Now we move to P3. It's 0, 1, 1, it's less than, we can take that for sure. So we take that into account. After using, after, after getting executed, it releases its own resources, 2, 1, 1. That gets added here, that's 7, 4, 3. So P3 gets done. Now we move to P4. So similarly, it's actually its need is 4, 3, 1, while the availability is 7, 4, 5 which is accepted, right? So again, it, it gets executed and, it, and it's, uh, this one gets released, okay? So now 743 plus 002, that's 745, okay? P4 gets executed, right? P32, now we move further to P0. For P0 we move, we check its availability, okay? 743 with 745. Again, that's, that, that's a false statement because its need is more than availability. So we can't take that. Now, this one is left only, P2. We come to P2, right? So we check 600 with 745. That's true. We can execute that. So we go on for that. And after, after P2 gets executed, it releases its resources. That's 302. It gets added. 7 plus 3, 10. 4 plus 0 remains 4. And 5 plus 2 becomes 7. So it's now 10, 4, 7. So now P2 also gets executed. Now P0 is left. It again checks for P0. Is it true? 743. Is it less than 10, 4, 7? That's bingo. It's true. So P0 gets executed now. Now its resources gets uh, deallocated. 10 plus 0, 10. 4 plus 1, 5. And 7 plus 1, 7. Second, 10, 5, 7. So this only process gets executed. So there's no breakdown. There's no unsafe state, we can say. And one thing which we have to keep in mind is that the max, see, this is the max it can have. Okay, these are, these are the instances 10 for A, B for, 5 for B, 7 for C. So no process can have, suppose, instances of A more than 10. Because the number of A is only 10. Okay, so we can't have any process which is having more than 10. That's a quite uh, obvious, you can have and uh, understand that. And so this way, if suppose uh, it uh, suppose it iterates in this process, okay? Suppose a process is left which can't be executed, then you can say there's a deadlock. Okay? If there's no such thing, you can say there's no deadlock. So this was basically the bankless algorithm.